Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So the bride in a Hebraic wedding during the period of Erusin, what is Erusin? Betrothal, Miriam and Yosef were betrothed to each other. Are you with me? During, after they meet that one time in the chubba, guess what happens? They don't see each other for a full year. And then when they do get married in stage number three, they only see each other for the first year. What a wisdom and knowledge. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, if you're single, make sure you do a shedukin, or as we say in Yiddish, a shetach. And if your parents are not walking in the blood of Yeshua and his Torah, find a rabbi or someone you trust to do a prearranged marriage. Your, your marriage will survive. Your marriage will survive. The odds are nine. You know what the divorce rate was back in the days of Yeshua? Zero. Why? Because they followed the pattern. They followed the Torah. So when Revelation 19.7 says, get yourself ready, what are you and I doing to get ready? We've got to walk in the things that Yahweh has prepared for us. How do we get prepared? We walk in the things that Yahweh has prepared for us. Pretty simple. What has he prepared for us? Everything. Torah, Shabbat, Moadim. These are all things that Yahweh has prepared for us. Make sense? Okay, so in the Hebraic um, betrothal, the bridegroom is not sweating out there building a house because the father says, no, now that you're betrothed, my son, my son, you went to look for a bride, you found a bride, and because you allowed me to do the Shedukim, now you enter the Eruzim, instead of going out and ruining your life before you even get started in your married life, come home. Build a home in my father's house. Yeshua betrothed us on Mount Sinai, and he came to renew those vows. He didn't marry us in the temple in Masesh Lichim, chapter 2. He began the process of renewal that will lead to stage 3 to the wedding. Is anyone with me? Now, go with me please to Yohanan 14. Yohanan 14. What has Yeshua been doing now for two days? Two days. Verse 1, Yochanan 14, 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in Elohim? Tov. Believe also in me. In my father's house, not, not at the mortgage broker's office, not, not at the bank, in my father's house. Where is Yeshua going to take his bride? The father's to the father's house. house. Why? Because the Father chose the bride for Yeshua. Yeshua says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and ordained you that you should bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. To that of Yahweh. Look at verse 2. If in my Father's house are many staying places, notice, staying, I would have told you. But there is plenty of room in Yahweh in the Father's house. I go to prepare a place for you. Okay, Yeshua entered into the Eruzin with B'nai Yisrael, then died, forgave her, took her in what? Betrothal. Has returned to the Father's house, because in the Father's house there are many rooms, because the bride of Yeshua is a huge commonwealth and a huge corporate body. Turn your neighbor and say corporate body. Corporate, corporate body. body. The people of Israel are a huge corporate body. And you and me may not get along if we're roommates, and yet we're all part of the betrothed bride of Yeshua. So he wants to make sure Sergio has his room, I've got my room, Brian's got his room. Does any of this make sense? In his father's house are many mansions. So what is the son doing? He's betrothed us. Is he building the house? Huh? No, he is bain bina. He is the son of the builder. He's not the builder, Raina. He's not the builder. The father should go to the house. Why should, why should he labor and sweat? He did his job. He betrothed the people of Renewed Covenant Israel. And what he's been doing for two days, for a day in Yahweh's sight, is as a thousand years. And a thousand years is as a day. He's been preparing not his house, 
or a borrowed house or a mortgage house or a bank house. He is preparing the father's house because the father prepared the bride. And by honoring the father who prepared the bride, he now honors the father and the father honors him because he honored the father and the father doesn't feel left out of the process. And the heavenly father says, Yeshua, bring your bride into my house. Are you with me? Now they're not married yet. They're still on the stage of Eruzim. Shedukim Eruzim. Well, you say, well, Rabbi, you say, wait a second, historic Christianity, they're preparing themselves. They go, to, they go to meetings every Sunday. They have Wednesday night Bible study. Well, slow down. We're talking about abiding in the Father's house. The Father's house is led by his Torah, his rules, his regulations. The only way to prepare, the bride to prepare, is for the bride to be pure, spotless, and tahor, clean. And the only way the bride can be pure, spotless, clean, and tahor is to walk in all the chukim, all the mishpatim, all the instructions of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Amen, somebody. Amen. I said, Amen. 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 Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So in my Father's house are many staying places. If it was not so, I would not have told you. Verse 3. If I go and prepare a place for you. Does this prove that we are not married to Yeshua? It sure does. He's still preparing the place. How long has the place been under, under construction and preparation? 2,000 years. Not literal construction, but preparation. The Father constructed it. All Yeshua is doing is preparing it. Amen? So notice, the bride is not in the chamber. The, the bride is not in the, in the many abiding places. The bride has to get herself ready to enter into the wedding. Amen? Amen? When did the bride first meet the bridegroom? The first time under the chuppah. When is the next time the bride is going to meet the bridegroom? At his return. Isn't that beautiful? So what are we supposed to be doing before, while he's preparing a place for us, what are we supposed to be doing to get ready to get married, get clean? The only way to get clean is to live clean. The only way to get clean is to be clean. The only way to walk clean is to walk in the cleanness and the fullness of the chukim, the mishpatim, of the Heavenly Father's Torah, somebody. So Yeshua has been preparing a place for his bride. The fact that he's preparing a place proves that what? that we are not yet his bride. Can, can scripture be any clearer? Now notice the deception of S period, A period, 10. He has the historic Christian church thinking that they are the bride. Already. Meaning, well, if they're the bride, that means Yeshua is done preparing. And if Yeshua is done preparing, you don't got to do nothing because doing is Torah. In the, in the historic Christian mind, doing is Torah. So therefore, since we are his bride, you don't have to prepare, and since you don't have to prepare, because the only way in historic Christianity that you can prepare is to have more grace. Yeah. But wait a second, grace by definition, chen, comes from Yahweh, does it not? Yeah. Grace doesn't come from man. So by definition, the only way the Christian bride can prepare for Yeshua's coming is more grace. Well, the only problem with that is, that's not the bride preparing herself. Grace always comes from and originates from Yahweh. Are you, is this, are you seeing this? Yeah. So, so how does the historic Christianity interpret these verses? Well, brother, you got it. Are you missing Wednesday night? Um, are, are you coming to the bazaar? How bizarre. <laughs> we have bingo, bingo, schmingo, ringo, ringo, star, bingo, ringo, Wednesday too. Are you going to be there? So in other words, the more times you attend mass, you're preparing yourself. The more times you eat the wafer, you're getting ready. You can't say, oh man, say, oh my goodness. But see, it's so cool to be Israel, because Israel actually has to do, we have faith that works. So you see, brethren, according to Yaakov, chapter 2, that Abraham Avinu was not justified by Emunah, he was justified and saved by his works. Abraham was saved by his works. Are you with me? So faith works. Faith works. Work out, Philippians 2.12, your own salvation with fear and trembling. So the bride of Israel has to prepare herself. The false bride, the bride of the anti-Messiah, in place of Yeshua says, we don't have to do nothing. We're on a chariot ride called grace. 
So if I don't got to do anything, the only way I can prepare myself is to get more grace. Well, how do I get more grace? I got to get saved every Sunday. Because I need more grace, I got to come back up next week. You understand? In Israel, it's do you love him? Do you really appreciate what he's done for you on Golgotha? Keep his commandments. You should have said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And are the commandments designed, didn't we learn that this morning in Torah? The commandments are designed to teach us the clean, the tahor, from what? From the unclean, from tamai. Tahor, from tamai. Why did Aaron have different robes for different occasions? To teach him the difference between clean and unclean. Why was Shabbat different than all other days? To teach us the difference between clean and common. Why, why are the Moedim special? To teach us the difference between clean, special, holy, set apart, and common. So the whole Torah is designed not to put you in bondage, but to teach you the difference between Tahor and Tamai. That's the whole Torah. So how do we prepare ourselves? By being a lamb without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle, without any such thing, Ephesians chapter 5. And the way we do that is we adopt the ways of Tahor and we reject the ways of commonness or of Tamai. Amen, somebody. Amen. So Yeshua has gone to prepare that place. Isn't that interesting? The bride is preparing through what? Obedience. The bridegroom is preparing through what? Obedience. How, 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 how do the bridegroom prepare a place, many mansions for us? By being obedient to the Father. How does the bride prepare herself? By being obedient to the same Father. Isn't that neat? Isn't that cool? So notice, we're not come together yet in intimacy. The bridegroom is in the Father's house preparing a place for us. One place? No, 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 no. Many, many abiding places. And how is he, how is he preparing that place? Through obedience to the Heavenly Father. Did he say, Daddy, I want to choose my bride? No. no, the Father said, I'm going to choose your bride. And Yeshua said, great, because Father knows best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So who told you to choose your own bride? How are you going to go get a bride? Through courting and dating? Is that what you're going to do? Some of you have already tried courting and dating and you wound up in handcuffs. <laughs> I'm not being funny. It's true. It's true. And courting and dating will wind you up on divorce court in front of Judge Ephraim. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love that woman. I'll tell you what. I wouldn't want to show up at her court. <laughs> Woo! She is something else. I'll tell you what. I'm, I'm just, sometimes I watch that program. I'm, half the time I'm laughing, half the time I'm crying. I mean, brothers and sisters, it sounds weird, but the proof is in the pudding. Some of you have been married according to the courting and dating ways of this world, and the church, historic church, it says, choose your own bride, date, find out if you get along. Radical stuff. Listen, honey, don't find out if you get along, because whether you do or you don't, it's not a matter of getting along, it's a matter of obedience. When you let your father and mother or a rabbi or some spiritual authority that you trust Choose your husband, choose your wife. I'll guarantee you there'll never be a divorce because when y'all come back to me for divorce, I won't divorce you. So there can't be a divorce. <laughs> but that bozo, he married you for 200 and he'll unmarry you for 300. I'm not for sale. I'm not in anybody's back pocket. Except Rivka's. <laughs> I ain't for sale. That's right. So when are we going to start doing things Yahweh's way? Those of you who are single, let your marriage be by Shadukim through the process of Eruzim. For Eruz Eruzim, I saw him once under the chuppah. I don't see him for a year. He's getting a job. He's getting his life in order. He went back to my, my boyfriend, who's going to be my husband. Now we're betrothed in the stage of Eruzim. He's going to go back to his father's house, and instead of asking Papa for money and going into debt and, and then owing his father money, hello, he's going to build another attachment or another abiding place or another room to the existing home of the father. What a mean Yahweh. What a mean Yahweh. He wants us to start our married life debt-free. 
He wants to start a married life in good relationship with our spouse and our parents. He wants us to start our married life under the authority of a rabbi or a spiritual covering that has established a system of righteousness. What a mean Yahweh. But the world and historic religion tell you, no, no, no. You get married, and boom, the pressure hits. Where's my next meal? Where's my house? Where's my job? How do we get along? We, we, uh, uh, and all these things, it's a guarantee for failure. Turn your neighbor and say, guarantee for failure. Let's try that again. Guarantee for failure. All right? Doing it the ways of the world is a guarantee for failure. If you're single, you're blessed. That means you have an opportunity to, to buck the world and to buck the religious system and to try something that Yahweh has told you will work. Are you willing to go with the program? Yes, of course. Are you willing to? And you married folks, well, now that you're married, it's too late. Now, as the bride of Yeshua, get yourself ready. The, bride is, the bridegroom is away preparing the Father's house. For that year that the bridegroom was away preparing the Father's house, what was the bride doing for a year? Getting ready. They weren't having fornication. They weren't playing with each other. They weren't hanging with each other. They weren't messing with each other. They weren't mussing with each other. They weren't making goo goo eyes and eyes that goo at each other. All right? They were uh, uh, at home having all kinds of thoughts about each other. She was preparing, he was preparing. She was preparing to be submitted to parents and spiritual authority. He was happy. He was in right relationship with his father. His father was in on the process. Everybody's content. There's content, there's no discord, there's no division. What did the bride do for a year? Listen, she would take her garments, listen, she would take her garments of erusin and beautify them Renew them, Ted, or uh, readorn them in preparation for the return of the bridegroom. Come on. Notice the bride would not take a new dress. She would not go to Saks Fifth Avenue, take her daddy's credit card, and say, I'm spending a $10 million for a wedding dress. Mm -hmm. Daddy says, you what? Where'd you get that kind of money? Papa, me took juca. <laughs> Papa said, Ju what? Ju to my car. <laughs> yes, Papa, but you know, it's a once in a while. It's only one time. One time, $10,000, one time? I mean, you, you have to buy high heels that, 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 uh, in the price range of a million Marcos? <laughs> you couldn't go to six ninety nine dollars Kmart? No. <laughs> no wonder Kmart's out of business, because you don't buy from them. You had to go buy in the same place Amelia Marcos used to get her shoes. Okay, so it's all, and you don't think that goes on? So the, during the preparation, the bride, listen, the bride is taking the same wedding um, uh, betrothal dress ever seen. What is she doing? She's adorning it. She's making it beautiful. She's making it pretty getting her garments all ready. Where's the bridegroom? Huh? The bridegroom is in the father's house, building, preparing, adding, cleaning the rooms. Notice, the bridegroom cleans him, cleans the house, but the bride cleans herself. 